Imagine you can master anything five times faster than everybody else. <laughs> Anyways, you know what it's like to feel behind. Comparing yourself to those who did the impossible in one year, three months, 30 days, by the time they were 25, but no more. This secret superpower is called meta-learning, which is learning how to learn. Instead of taking all this time, you do it in a fraction of it. There are six things I've learned from the world's fastest learners, and if you don't know these, you're gonna fall behind. And this first one blew my mind when I first discovered it. I think we've all heard stories of people who failed for years at something before they became really good at it. For example, Jimmy Donaldson, AKA Mr. Beef, who made videos for years without getting any results. But how did this initial failure keep them going? It didn't. One of the first videos Mr. Bean ever put out went viral. I was 11, I was playing a game, a guy just started destroying me, absolutely crushing yeah, me. Yeah. So I made a video saying, this guy. He got a bunch of views and his brain dumped a fat load of dopamine all over him. Dopamine being the chemical for motivation and desire. Which basically tells your brain, whatever you just did to get that thing, do it again and don't stop until we have it again. And that kept him going. That's what keeps anyone motivated. When somebody's obsessed with something, it's oftentimes because somebody told them early on Wow, you are really good at this. Michael Jordan wasn't cut from the basketball team. He was just too short at age 15, but he was already considered a great player that a lot of people cheered on. But being the underdog makes for a better story. So rule number one is get early wins. Get positive feedback as soon as possible, which will get you excited, allows you to learn faster, and keeps you going when it gets hard. For example, what's the first simple sentence if you are learning Spanish? Yeah. Like I now have to. I have a problem. My friends and I have planned a trip to Mexico City five days from now. I asked them, anyone else speak Spanish fluently? And I sent it before realizing I don't. My buddy Steven made fun of me with this meme. My ego got hurt and I publicly announced to everyone, I will only speak Spanish to locals in Mexico. Mark my words, senorita, which means my guy. How long do you think it'll take me to learn Spanish? Do you know any Spanish? See. Si? Hola. Hola. Perro. Perro. Ejercicio. <laughs> it's like a totally different language. It's got different grammar. It doesn't translate in the same order. Learn Spanish in four hours. Boom. I need some help. So I'm talking to YouTube's skill expert. His name is Mike Shake. Get it? Because the mic is shaking. Maybe he can help me. Learning a language is actually one of the hardest skills for me. By the way, I only have two hours a day. Two hours a day, damn, that's, that's hard. How do you pick the right thing to learn from? When you get into something new, you want to learn from the highest experts, the top people in that field, right? Wrong, in a lot of cases. The everyday person gets this second thing wrong and it'll guarantee slow learning. Here's the thing. When I dabbled in jujitsu, I asked my instructor, what's the fastest way to learn this? And he told me, there are no shortcuts, my son. You have to do the reps. And I said to him, listen, that sounds good in a motivational video. Like, there are no shortcuts, blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about an overnight success here. I mean, I get a black belt in eight years rather than 10 years. That's a shortcut, okay? And they always exist. And then I grabbed him <laughs> and choked him out. I think that's what happened. Then at home, a quick Google search later, I found this guy, Kid Dale. Instead of taking the average 10 to 15 years to get a black belt, he did it in less than four. He's a two times BJJ World Pro champ and he's taught other students how to get their black belt much faster. So number two, pick the right teacher or strategy. So who could be the Kid Dale of learning languages? Do you know Justin? He's yeah. like one of those quirky people that make fun of other language learning experts. For me, I do think that you could get at least tourist comfortable. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for perfect. You said I want the most frequent, like let's say 300 words. That never works. Phrases will teach you a lot more. So like the word cat, for example. Oh, I know the word cat, but no one just walks around and says cat. In school, they dump all this complex grammar and useless vocabulary on you, which is completely overwhelming, demotivating, and just inefficient. So what can we do differently? How do you approach learning a new skill? I used to think that to learn something, you just need practice and practice and practice. E, E, 
If you only keep practicing over and over, you are way slower compared to getting a reference before starting. Something like watching a tutorial. This next one here is all about finding the key leverage points, meaning what are the 20% of things that I can learn that already give me 80% of the results. In Spanish, for example, the top 100 words can get you about 50% fluent. All right, this is insane. Words ending in AL can easily be converted to Spanish. For example, natural, natural, fatal, Fatal, liberal, ideal, cultural, colonial. I know hundreds of words now just by knowing this one rule. Making stuff complicated is probably the worst thing you can do if you want to learn something. The key objective here is to avoid overwhelm at all costs. It creates frustration and a feeling of losing. And as we know from getting early wins, feeling like you're winning is crucial because more wins means more dopamine, more motivation, you end up practicing more, which means you get more wins. So position yourself for winning by finding the key leverage points. It is Sunday. I have four days left and I haven't practiced anymore. Hello. That's what I would, I would classify as a metric to pay attention to is can you pull it out of your brain without seeing any prompts to support your memory? Buenos dias. Me llamo Leon. Um, why did I commit to this and now I'm not even making the time to, to practice it? I think as humans, we all have this innate fear of falling behind or feeling like we are somehow flawed. It's all these comparisons and expectations that we put on ourselves. And when we don't hit those, it feels like there's something wrong with us. I'm a big fan of this next one. Imagine this scenario. It's two people learning how to meditate. Person one meditates for 20 minutes a day. They learn the technique somewhere online and after three months, they think they've gotten better and person two is doing the same thing. But they're wearing a device that measures their brain waves and it tells them within seconds whether they're doing it right or not. It gives them feedback. Now, if you put these two in a meditation death match, who do you put your money on? Probably the best way to learn a language is throwing yourself into the culture or like a nation in which you can only speak that language. I have many people that I could call right now to have you practice with. Hola! Hola. Uh, me llamo Leon. Um, vivo in Texas. Uh, pero donde Alemania? <laughs> Does it make sense? Do you know what I said? Born? Si. Si. Soy Aleman. Soy Aleman. Well, I need to adjust my learning material. The key thing is tightening that feedback loop by getting feedback earlier, more immediate, and more often. Flying to Mexico tomorrow. All right, let's get a couple more hours in. Hasta luego. Nos vemos. No sé. Puedes explicarlo, por favor. Last study session at the airport. By now, I maybe studied six hours in total. I hope I don't embarrass myself. I made it to Mexico City. Look who's here! Yay! Steven. Time to show him I know more than three words of Spanish. I would like for you to quiz him, see how good his Spanish is. Just ask me a few questions. Yeah? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien. ¿Y a qué te dedicas? Okay. <laughs> what is that? Uh, what do you do for you? Tengo un canal de YouTube. What type of videos are on YouTube? Oh, yes. Good. You said you also do stuff on YouTube? No. And that's where a lot of people, myself included, get stuck. What you've learned to this point only gets you so far. You hit a plateau. You've finally gotten good and you don't want to go back to sucking. For example, on our YouTube channel, the last few videos have performed really badly because we've been moving away from entrepreneurship content more into broader self-improvement things because that's what we want to make. This is where most people freak out and they go back to what they used to do. That's why you see so many creators who haven't innovated their content in years because it's a risk to innovate. And this applies to almost anything in life where people get stuck. They don't want to end a bad relationship because being alone sucks. They don't want to go to therapy because they'll experience more pain first before they can start feeling better. You need to have the courage to get worse first in order to get better. I'll be honest, my Spanish still sucks. I wanted this to be an inspiring video where I do something really quickly and uh, <laughs> I just should have practiced more. However, for the six hours that I did practice, I think I made a lot of progress. 
980. Oh, 980. Muy bien. Ooh. Raph, you just totally missed it. He was asking me all these questions. I was like, bah, 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 bah. smooth as, as, as anything. I mean, if Steven was there, he, he would have peed his pants. He would have crumbled. What did you get, Leon? I don't know what I'm ordering right now. <laughs> I think I'm ordering a kilo of tortillas, but I'm too shy to go back now. Exactly what I wanted. Like, oh, I'll take this. <laughs> Whoa. Puedo tomar algo en carne? Aquí te informasos. No, we inform you here. Dude, you are killing it, seriously. Really? Yeah. Hey, Steven. Dana said my Spanish is better than yours. For a person that's learned like five days, you're all right. You're not too bad. Overall, I believe there's one thing that makes all the other ones obsolete because it's so important. There was a study done with Asian women where they put them through a math test. And in one group, they told them, oh, you're a woman, good luck with the test. In the other group, they told them, oh, you're Asian, good luck with the test. Just by changing that one label, the first group performed worse and the second group performed better. Simply because of the story they were telling themselves in their heads. If you have a self image or identity that tells you, I'm just not good at this thing, you're gonna do terrible at it. Tony Robbins, huge idol of mine. He's the best public speaker on the planet by a long shot. His biggest tip is just by believing you're a great public speaker and people wanna hear what you have to say, you're already 80% there. I was lucky that early on I was good at sports, I was good at school and I was just good at stuff. So I created this identity that when I tackle something, I just get it done. There's a lot of people who just keep replaying these failures in their mind. And this identity creates this reality because they never really try and it reinforces that identity. And maybe for some of you, it's time to get out of that negative spiral. And by shifting that and finding proof, you can maybe shift that self-image. This trip with my friends that I hadn't seen in years was so fun and so many beautiful memories were made. Learning Spanish or any skill in an environment like that, that's the biggest hack. I hope this was helpful to someone out there. I'll see you in the next one.